people out there see the Bible as a book of myths, rejecting all its teachings of salvation through grace. And there's the intellectual crowd, the archaeologists, anthropologists, and philosophers who see it more as a reference book. Many others don't think of it at all, which I consider to be the greatest tragedy. Now, I'm simply a wretched pastor, and I can only speak for myself, but I see the Bible as headlines of happenings from today, taught by the wisdom of God on the perpetual cycle of mankind. No matter how far modernity stretches the human experience, we always end up back in primitive tribal states of being. You know what's happening out there. It is the violence, the riots, the lying by everyone. All of it leading to the tightening fist of tyrannical control. The polarization from this has made us all seek refuge among the like-minded. That, in and of itself, creates a certain stagnation. In other words, echo chambers make us mentally deaf and dumb to speak when things must be said outside our circle. Instead of unifying a nation in chaos, our so-called leaders are ginning up hate and division for their own ends. They act like children playing grown-ups against one another, while serious adults with actual children suffer under their need for control. The Bible has the story. Extra, extra, read all about it in Isaiah, chapter 3, verses 3 through 5. The captain of fifty, and the honorable man, and the counselor, and the cunning artificer, and the eloquent orator... And I will give children to be their princes, and babes shall rule over them. And the people shall be oppressed, every one by another, and every one by his neighbor. The child shall behave himself proudly against the ancient, and the base against the honorable. That right there, friends? That's right now. What do we have in Washington, D.C., but a pack of children fiddling while Rome burns? Many, in fact, are stoking the flames. When you hear others condoning violence as a means to an end and not a means of defense, where do you draw the line in your own mind? And by extension, your relationship to Jesus Christ. No matter the tact or shrill tongue, remember upon engaging, it's God's plan, not yours. Your ego is the seed of man's judgment upon man. That's not your place. Keep his word, especially when it is a supreme effort to do so. This, I believe, with all my faith pleases him. And honestly, how often do any of us really please him? Jesus dropped a truth bomb about that one in Matthew chapter 10, verses 22 to 24. And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. But he that endureth to the end shall be saved. But when they persecute you in this city, flee ye into another. For verily I say unto you, ye shall not have gone over the cities of Israel till the Son of Man be come. The disciple is not above his master, nor the servant above his Lord. Personally, I can't be tickled more than to be hated for his namesake. It's the one time I am entirely sure I'm getting something right. Right now, it's all on the line. And the real heroes in this battle are those who turn not from the ways of God and unto the ways of judgment, but those who rise above. This is a place where we are all equals, the infirmed and the athletic alike, the intellectual and the simple-minded, rich and poor, Choose any dichotomy you wish. We are all equal in Jesus' eyes. It takes courage and great faith, both of which any among you is able to summon if we let go of us and embrace him. That's how we overcome. Jesus had a soundbite on this in John chapter 3, verse 30. He must increase, but I must decrease. Now, it's certainly okay to discern if your pearls are better cast in other places, but don't judge those who grow distant as you walk away. For some are drawn to salvation through Christ by memories of those who had peace when they may now seek peace in regret of a life of sin. 
Let people know you by your good works, and not the vision of a rolling eye. I said people, not God. To him your best works are but a filthy rag, and never forget this. For all your morality and self-righteousness, if God would reject none of them who may seek him from the darkest corridors of humanity, do you walk in his footsteps if you have judged and dismissed the wretched? I'm certainly no example of conduct. I've fallen short in so many ways I can't count them. But I say don't look to man for a leader. Fellowship is far better. Seek the Lord and gird up for the final battle as it unfolds. Men and women who hold Christ in their hearts are the watchmen. Pay attention to the news, just not the fake news. Watch the events. Did you happen to see this news reel happen? Revelation, chapter 17, verse 4. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color, and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. I saw it, and I could hear the verse inside me as it unfolded. We can discern who they are. We can and must stand against tyranny. If you have lived a life-seeking purpose, your time is now! What had you lived for until you found Jesus? Nothing! Things that will perish and decompose in the earth from whence they came. Meaningless things. This life is precious, but not for things and prestige. This is your proving ground as a soldier of Christ. In military news, Ephesians chapter 6, verses 11 through 13. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore take unto you the whole armor of God that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. That's your rules of engagement. It's not about the war we fight, it's about how we fight the war. If they meet me with violence, I will defend this temple of God. If they attack my spirit, I will not fall to their level in order to stand against them. Nor will I seek retaliation, by no means be pacifist, nor warmonger. For the devil, taking you off of God's game plan, just a little bit, is a victory. You could win the day on earth, but lose your way in getting to heaven. That's what the scripture warns of. And again, I'm just a wretched pastor, but I see this too. Christians wishing illness and death upon others? That's not how we roll. We are better than that. Don't be a tool of Lucifer. Be a child of Christ. God bless you. Jesus love you. May the Holy Spirit walk with you.